Hi everyone, thanks for watching. It's me, Tim Clapham from Lux over here in Sydney, Australia with another Cinema 4D tutorial for you. And this tutorial is going to take a look at using uh, the sort mode within the cloner object and also the sorted option with the random effector, all part of the MoGraph module from Cinema 4D. As you can see from the object manager, it's a pretty basic setup at the top here. I have a cloner object and um, it's called cloner sort. And underneath this clone, I've got uh, 10 loft nerbs and each one of these has just got a text spline in it with um, the numbers going from zero through to nine. In the cloner underneath, I have just one polygon object and this has a material on the cloner object itself but we'll come back to this in a moment first of all let's take a look at this top cloner now if we come over to the object manager at the moment you can see clones is set to iterate so what it's basically doing is it's iterating down through the hierarchy and it's showing each one of these objects one after another if we come to the clones iterate menu and just come down and choose sort instead notice that what happens is it actually just shows the first object so what use is the sort mode? Well, the, the idea behind sort mode is that you can then use effectors to decide which clone you would like to show. So just to give you an example of this, let's select this cloner object, come to the MoGraph menu, come down, and I'm going to add in a plane effector. Now, by default, the plane effector is set to uh, adjust the Y position. So let's just switch that off. So at the moment, the plane effector hasn't got any active parameters. If we just drag this across slightly, if you come to the modify clone parameter and drag this across, what you can see happens is that we're modifying the clone that is being shown through the cloner sort mode. So this is the sort mode of the cloner in action and you can see that we can use this by animating or modifying the clone parameters. We can then decide which clone is made visible. So you could use this to create animation by having uh, several clones that are all frames for an animation. By using an effector, you can then kind of create a stop motion type effect. Of course, this also works with fall off. So if we select our plane effector, come to fall off and let's just choose linear. Let's rotate this around like so and extend the fall off. Come back to the parameter tab and let's set modify clone up to 100. If we now grab our effector and pull it through you can see that the fall off is now being used to modify which clone is being displayed so it's a pretty cool feature let's delete the plane effector from the object manager for now of course this will work with uh, all effectors so you could use a shader effector and use something like noise to randomly change which number shows um, if you wanted to kind of decode a word you could use it for those kind of things um, i'm just going to set the actual cloner back to iterate for now and with it selected let's come and choose MoGraph random effector in the transform parameter transform tab let's switch off position Come down to modify clone and let's pull this up to 100% and you can see it's randomizing which clone is being displayed. However, we seem to have lots of zeros and um, the reason for that is if we come to the effector menu is to do with the minimum and maximum values. If we adjust these, we can adjust the range that's being used to randomize our clones. If we come to random mode, however, and click on the pop-up list, here we have the option to choose sorted. Now sorted is a unique new random mode what that allows us to do is it allows us to sort between our clones and only show one of each clone. So here we have 10 clones and we have numbers between 0 and 9. So theoretically using this option it will only show us numbers or clones between 0 and 9. Now the reason it's not working here is because the minimum is set to minus 100. But if we set that to 0 you can see that now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine so everything's working as it should if we adjust the seed value you can see all the numbers change but we still only have one of each of our clones showing so this is handy for examples such as this or an obvious use might be for something like a pack of playing cards where you don't want to have any of your cards duplicated but you may want to shuffle those 52 cards where the random effector will allow you to do that and you won't get five aces you'll still only have four 
So the other object in the object manager is cloner iterate and in here we just have one polygon object. However, this has a material and if we click on our material and open up the color channel, you can see in here I've placed a multi shader. In the multi shader, we have 10 different images and these are numbered between one and 10 and they also change color so you can easily see uh, the difference between them. At the top here, I've got the mode set to color brightness. So depending on which level of brightness our clone is set to will determine which shader out of the multi shader is used. So if we select our cloner iterate, come up to MoGraph and add in a step effector, you can see that by default it actually scales them up. So let's come to parameter uncheck scale. But if we switch on color mode, you can see that now we start with 01 and we travel up to number 10. And if we render that, you should clearly see that the step effector is in fact traveling through all those shaders within our multi shader. So that's pretty cool. If we delete that, choose our cloner iterate in the effectors tab, let's drag in the random effector, select our random effector. And again, let's enable color mode and switch this to on. And you can see that now it's uh, doing the same thing as it did on the numbers above, but it's working with the multi shader as well. So it's randomly picking a shader from the multi shader settings, but we don't have any shader picked twice. And the reason it's doing this is because the effector is set to random mode sorted. So hopefully you can see that using the sort mode in the cloner to determine which clone is visible and using the sorted mode within the random effector can offer you lots and lots of potential for your MoGraph projects. I hope you enjoyed this quick tip. Thanks very much for watching. And if you want to see any more tips, then head over to www.hellolux.com and I'm sure there'll be something else to take your interest. Thanks very much.